This is Mrs. O'Neill for AP Chemistry, Chapter 15, Section 5 and 6, Part 1, Calculating Equilibrium Constants and Applications of Equilibrium Constants, and these are the notes. So you should have watched that intro lesson on the reaction quotient. So my notes contain what he talked about, his analogy of hide and seek. He talked about reversible reactions and how K is that constant, so those are the concentrations at equilibrium. However, the reaction quotient is calculated exactly the same way, but it's the using the initial concentrations of those reactants. Gave you that nice flow chart as he always does. And then of course he talked about this model and this free energy diagram. We're gonna come back to this free energy diagram and do a little more detail about it in chapter 19. So again, that free energy diagram, this is the diagram you're gonna see in chapter 19 and how these reactants and products and how free energy and equilibrium are related to each other. So we talked about that reversible models and how he kept track of the number of reactants and products. Again, graphing that data, but that K is constant. That K value, that equilibrium constant stayed as a 1.9. But our Q values, okay, are different uh, and they vary depending on the pathway that it took. Okay, so we want to though remember that Q eventually became K at equilibrium. So there is a point where Q and K can be that same value and that would be at the equilibrium point. So again, in summary, he talked about how that reaction would lie. Would it lie to the left, to the right, or again, would that reaction be at equilibrium? Well, the answer lies in how that Q value compares to the K value. How's that quotient, that, um, that Q quotient value, initial concentrations of those reactants um, and products compared to the equilibrium value. So again, he used a number line, and I'm going to bring this to your attention later on, as how he uses this number line to give you, again, another way of remembering which way that reaction lies depending on the value of Q versus K. And I always do Q versus K because Q are the initial values of those concentrations, and K is those values at equilibrium. So I always say Q before K, so I always compare Q uh, in um, relation to K. So again, it only works in these homogeneous reactions. We want to remember that those reactants and products are going to be in the same state of matter. A mixture would not work. So how do we apply this to these chemical reactions? Well, he introduced you to this ice box um, that we're going to talk about in the next section and how to do these problems in a little bit more detail. So hopefully you kind of went through ice meaning initial change in equilibrium. You need that balanced chemical equation and how this K value is going to um, compare again to the Q value. So if we know that Q equals zero, and now we know the equilibrium concentrations, and we get a value of K equals 650, again, Q is less than K. So again, we got to know those um, less than and equal signs. So if Q is less than K, the reaction is going to lie to the right. So how do we fill in this ice box? Again, we're going to talk about this more in detail later, but just something to remind you of now, we're going to subtract when it comes to reactants. We're going to subtract the change, but we also have to keep in mind the coefficients of our balanced equation. We're also going to add for products, and again, keep in mind, we're also going to have to use those balanced equation, those coefficients. So again, stoichiometry is going to be really important in in these ice boxes. So that next intro lesson is on equilibrium. Again, my notes include his little demonstration of moving water from one jar to another. He gave us that nice flow chart as he always does. And he talked again about this Haber process, a really, really important reaction. So over time, what happens to concentration? At some point, they level off. Notice I said the concentration levels off. The concentrations are not equal but the rate is equal. So then he showed you this nice other chart or this nice graph that shows that the rate of the, the, the rate of the forward reaction 
equals the rate of that reverse reaction. So remember, the concentrations are not the same. They are um, related, again, to the coefficients of the balanced equation, but the rate of the forward at some point will equal the rate of the reverse, and that's when equilibrium happens. So again, we need to be able to calculate the K value and the Q value. Again, it's a relationship between products over reactants. Same reaction, I'm sorry, different reaction, but same concept here. So again, that Q versus K, and he uses that number line. So in this case, Q is greater than K, so it's going to rely more to the left. And that kind of should make sense if we're thinking about that ratio between those products and the reactants. So equilibrium with the Haber process again, concentrations of all three stay the same in relation to the balanced chemical equation, okay? So these lines represent the three different ratios of the coefficients in that balanced reaction, but at some point equilibrium is established because the rate of the reactant, the rate of the rea product, and the rate of the reactant are all the same. So again, we're starting with different amounts, but eventually it reaches equilibrium. So solving for K again is products over reactants. Now it's a little bit different than that rate law expression. I want to remind you that that rate law expression, first of all, only dealt with reactants. Second of all, you needed to find these exponents, right? You needed to calculate either from data or the slow step or knowing if it's first or second or third order from a graph, okay? So this is quite different. K, capital K, is our equilibrium constant, and it is the products divided by the reactants. Concentrations of our products to some exponent. These exponents, however, are from the balanced chemical equation. They're our coefficients. The bottom are our reactants, and again, the exponents are going to be the coefficients from our balanced chemical equation. So he gave you then a nice example of how to just set up the um, algebraic equation. So again, here's another example. Hopefully you kind of went through that and can do that with him. So again, how do we calculate K? Well, once we find that equilibrium value of our reactants and products, then it's a matter of just plugging and chugging. The trick is going to be finding the concentration values at equilibrium. So again, if we calculate Q, we're only using the initial um, concentrations. And again, when we're comparing the two, in this case, Q is less than K. Because Q is less than K, again, our little um, cheat sheet down here, since Q is less than K, it would lie to the right. In other words, we would have at some point, or at, using those initial concentration versus the equilibrium constant that we know is always constant, using those initial concentrations, that reaction would have more products than reactants overall. So again, if we want to fill in the rest of the ice box, he kind of goes through that and again uses stoichiometry, telling us that we are subtracting for reactants and adding that change for products. And again, we're going to go through this a little bit more detail, um, this section of the notes, but part two. Again, and gave you that other example, and this is where it's going to get tricky, and we're going to use this more in acid and base um, equilibrium equations, but we're going to use an X because sometimes we don't know the change. If we don't know what the change is, then we're going to plug and chug and solve for X, but then we're going to have to use that X value, go back to our equilibrium, again, put in our X value, solve for our equilibrium concentrations, and then solve for K overall. So again, to your notes packet, your objective, classify the value of that equilibrium constant, calculate those equilibrium constants, or I should say concentrations of those reactants and products. Again, use that equilibrium constants to predict the equilibrium concentrations, and again, determine the direction in which the reaction is going to proceed. So pause, fill in the notes, and play to hear my words. Again, reaction quotient is the same formula as going to be our equilibrium constant equation, okay, but we're using initial concentrations and not equilibrium concentrations. So again, those three possibilities, 
And I like to say the arrows are opposite. So if Q is greater than K, it shifts to the left. And if Q is less than K, it shifts to the right. So I like to always say you have to have Q before K, right? You have to have your initial concentrations before your equilibrium concentrations. So I always like to compare Q versus K. So again, he talked about that, um, that number line. So it, look this over and from what he said, hopefully this makes sense as well. So let's look at our first example. We have our reaction. Now again, we're given moles instead of molarity, but ha ha, they give us two liters. So the first thing we wanna do is change our units from moles to concentration by dividing. So do that quickly, pause the video. Hopefully you got these three values, okay? So now we can plug and chug, solve for Q. Again, products over reactants. Our exponents are the coefficients of our balanced chemical equation. So did you get this as a starting point? Now we can plug and chug our numbers and hopefully you get that as an answer. So what does that really tell us? Well, it's going to tell us how the reaction is going to proceed. I have a constant of 51, and now I have my, con my, my Q value, right? Our Q value is 1.3, which is less than our K value. So how is it going to reach equilibrium? Well, read all that, and hopefully that makes sense. We're going to end up with more products because our Q value is less than our K value. So why don't you give it a try? The equation is not balanced, or I should say the reaction is not balanced. They gave you the initial concentration, so you should calculate K, and they also gave you the actual K value. So calculate Q, compare it to the K, and how is the reaction going to lie? So did you get this for a balanced equation? Can we plug and chug our numbers? into our overall algebraic expression and get that as our answer. So now Q is greater than K, so the shift is gonna be left. In other words, if these are our initial concentrations, we know our K value, we can say that the we're gonna have more reactants in our pot than products. So see you in class. Hopefully this makes sense and it will make more sense as we're working on our bookwork.